This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you want to learn how you can get a free trial and learn the real life connection hidden in the nun, then stick around to the end of this video. We don't have an official trailer for The Nun to follow the teaser trailer that's been playing in cinemas, but we do have a lot of content to analyze in the form of these TV spots entitled Abby, Coffin, Visions, Discover, Reveal, and Investigate. So on that note, let's investigate these commercials. The Abbey has a long history. Not all good. Hello? So it starts on this radio, which sets the soundtrack for this commercial. It's a cover of Some Enchanted Evening from the 1949 musical South Pacific. In South Pacific, the song is sung by a French plantation owner about a woman he's just met, but he instantly knows he will see her again because it's love at first sight. Some enchanted evening, you may see a stranger. Aside from the you will see a stranger line taking a creepier meaning in a horror movie, the broader themes of the song within the context of the piece also become more interesting. The character in South Pacific describes the feeling of knowing that he'll see the girl again, whereas the characters in the Conjuring franchise, Ed Warren, Lorraine Warren, and this new character, Sister Irene, all have psychic premonitions about the demon Valak. I had a series of visions when I was younger, and after each one, the same thought would be stuck in my head. I saw none. I had this crazy dream. I saw this thing. When I woke up, I couldn't get out of my head. So. I had a vision in Amityville. I had a premonition of your death. You've seen it too. The demon in your painting is real. When a psychic has a premonition, it's something that they'll know they'll see again in the future. Just as Emil from South Pacific knows that he'll see his love again, these characters know they'll be seeing Valak again on some enchanted evening. This shot shows the sister sleeping next to this pool of water, but notice how she's vertical compared to the horizontal body of water. So this is a composite shot. I think the director wanted us to see her dream and her reaction at the same time. And I think her dream could be related to this other shot we see in the commercial, a Valak lurking in the water. And I've said it once and I'll say it again, these water scenes are getting really popular lately. Obviously there are going to be a lot of crosses since it's set in an abbey, but there seem to be a symbolic struggle going on between the crosses, a sign of faith and religion, and inverted crosses, a sign of demons and the occult. There are even a couple of instances of crosses being rotated 180 degrees to become inverted crosses, which could be a symbol of someone being converted to Satanism. This might be a big part of the film because even the title card for the nun sneaks in a cross being turned upside down. If you pause as the father is researching about Valak, the text is too blurry to make out, but we do have a couple of intriguing illustrations. The one on the left is a picture of Valak, but not in the nun form we're used to seeing. The nun form is actually something that was made up for The Conjuring 2. Valak was an existing character from the 17th century spell book known as the Lesser Key of Solomon. The purpose of the book was supposedly to teach people about how to conjure demons, basically like a 17th century equivalent of a Lance Stewart video. Anyone out there that we can speak to, please, we're in need of help. I don't know what else to do. We keep getting somebody that says goodbye. We're trying to talk. Please, is there anyone there? Yes or no? Bro, again! God. And it's also the book that details King Paimon from another recent horror movie, Hereditary which I also have things you missed on. But in The Lesser Key of Solomon, Valak is described as a terrifying demon child with wings, riding on a two-headed dragon. It's possible that this drawing of Valak is more of a reference to that, Valak's true form, and that the nun is just an alternate. This other picture appears to be a redead from Ocarina of Time with a giant serpent coming out of his face. So maybe that's like a third form of Valak. Here's the next thing you missed. Did you see it? Let me slow that down for you. Look right here. Well, that's just terrifying. So here's one of the inverted crosses that I mentioned earlier. The fire seems to have been started from a dropped lantern. Remember what happened at the end of the teaser trailer? Hello. 
My guess is that these incidents are related, but it could also be from this character. The next spot is Visions, but I didn't really find anything significant in that, so let's move on to Discover. <laughs> In 1952, the Vatican investigated the events at the Abbey of St. Cardo. This is what they discovered. The nun. Okay, so for this one, I want you to look at the backgrounds. This image shows a bunch of grave plots. This one is a chapel. This one looks like one of the characters is in a crucifix position, possibly tying into the cross motif mentioned earlier. And in this last one, we see more of the graves, and we discover that they're out front of the abbey. The narration here almost implies that the movie is based on a true story, like all the Conjuring films. But also like all the Conjuring films, the story is clearly fiction, but there are some true characters, places, and events. In this case, the setting. The Abbey of St. Carta in Romania is a real place, and some tourism websites claim that it's haunted. The abbey was home to the Order of the Cistercians a group of Roman Catholic monks and nuns who became known as the White Monks because of the color of their garb. They all died in their mid-30s due to extreme fasting practices and poor living conditions, and were buried inside the abbey. Priests and visitors have since claimed that the abbey is haunted by the monks who once lived there, citing moving chairs and vibrating walls. These graves seen at the abbey could be in reference to the haunting of the white monks, and there may be other connections, which I'll get back to. First, let's watch the next spot. Reveal. Roll it. My God. So I'm guessing these are the spirits of the white monks haunting the monastery, and Valak has taken over one of them. And wouldn't you know it, he's in a crucifix position. But if you look closely, he seems to be standing on a big pentagram. You can see it a little bit better in the final shot. Moving on now to Coffin. So I wouldn't be surprised if this also ties into the idea of the burial of the white monks. There's also a little string he's pulling on when he's trapped inside the coffin, which I'm guessing is tied to this bell on the tombstone. Let it be known that when I die, I would like to have this feature on my coffin in case I come back as a zombie. Actually, just build a big fire on home plate at Wrigley Field and toss my coffin in. Roll the next spot. Here to investigate the death of a nun. On September 7th. Witness the darkest chapter, Violet the Defiler, in the Conjuring Universe. <gasps> the Nun. If you pause and look at these lighting fixtures, they appear to possibly be the winged child form of Valak. And if you pause on this shot, you'll see that this is the door that I talked about when I did the episode on the Nun teaser trailer that says Finit Hic Deo, or God Ends Here. It may lead to the corridor first seen at the end of Annabelle Creation. One of the legends about the white monks tell about a tunnel that was dug from the abbey to a nearby river that could have been used to escape in the event of an invasion. Perhaps this corridor is supposed to be that very tunnel. I do get questions from time to time asking about how I make these videos and how to be a YouTuber and stuff, so I've decided to partner with Skillshare to hook you all up with an amazing free offer. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can take classes directly from experts in your field. And it doesn't just have to be technical skills. You can learn fun stuff that you'll use all the time, like how to build out your Instagram or how to Photoshop yourself into a horror movie image. There's literally a class for that. This could be you. And the great thing about Skillshare is you actually have people who know what they're doing. I think all of us have tried to look up some tutorials before and ended up getting something from some eight-year-old kid from the UK and you can't understand what the heck he's saying because he's recording in an actual tin can. Well, with Skillshare, you'll be treated to high-quality, documentary-style lessons created by teachers with credentials. And another issue with random online tutorials is that you can't go at your own pace. If I'm trying to learn how to achieve a VHS look in After Effects, I don't need you to teach me how to download and open the program first, you eight-year-old kid from Wales. But with Skillshare, lessons are broken up into sections, so you can quickly find exactly what you want to learn and become an expert. For a limited time, Skillshare is hooking up viewers of CZ's World with two free months. 
just click the link in the description to get started. And even if you don't have something you want to learn right now, I'd recommend taking that free trial anyways, and then as soon as you do need to look something up, you'll just be a click away. You're going to be finding tutorials for things you didn't even know you wanted to learn. So once again, just click the link in the description right now to get two free months of this premium service. But that's going to do it for these commercials for the nun and for Skillshare. If you're excited to see this film, leave me a like on this video. And if you love horror movies, you have come to the right place. Remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.